was a man who was called the negative prophet or the weeping prophet. He was not popular in his time. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Rod Hember. And I'm Janice. This program is called Quick Study Television Bible Discovery TV. And as we continue on looking at this, it's great to have you back, Ryan. It's good to be back. I have and some exciting news, Slater. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. oh, I look forward oh. to that. Very good. Good to have you, Corey. <laughs> Thanks. It's great to be here. We are going to talk about Jeremiah, the man who is the person who nobody liked. But he mm -hmm. became God's prophet. And a lot of people respect him, although a lot of people don't read his prophecies. A lot of people respect him and know him now. And... Uh, his prophecies are very interesting because they also get into the end of time prophecies, which I believe we're living in now. So we'll talk about that and more as we continue on this weekend edition of the Quick Study Bible Discovery TV program. Get your Bible guide and let's go. Jeremiah 20 verses 1 through 6. Now Pasher, the son of Immer, the priest who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Then Pasher struck Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of the Lord. And it happened on the next day that Pasher brought Jeremiah out of the stocks. Then Jeremiah said to him, The Lord has not called your name Pasher, but Magar Misabib, for thus says the Lord, Behold, I will make you a terror to yourself and to all your friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and your eyes shall see it. I will give all Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall carry them captive to Babylon and slay them with the sword. Moreover, I will deliver all the wealth of this city, all its produce, and all its precious things, all the treasures of the kings of Judah I will give into the hand of their enemies, who will plunder them, seize them, and carry them to Babylon. And you, Pasher, and all who dwell in your house shall go into captivity. You shall go to Babylon, and there you shall die, and be buried there, you and all your friends, to whom you have prophesied lies. Jeremiah chapter 20 verses 1 through 6. When the Lord God speaks an unchangeable truth about the future, now it's critical to learn why he says these things. Jeremiah was not popular during the time of Judah's demise because he often spoke harsh messages of truth directly from God. The so-called men of God that in that time often criticized Jeremiah for bringing words of the Lord like this to the people, sometimes even prophesying lies against them. Well, the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 20 that Pashur, a priest or a chief governor, struck Jeremiah and put him in the stocks located at the gate of Benjamin. Now, we don't know fully what Jeremiah's punishment was like, but we do hear things that soon happened to Pashur and all of those who listened to his lies. We continue to study Jeremiah. This is very interesting. And as we see this and as we look at it, we have to ask the question. And the question is, God, what are you saying to us? What is the message that you're communicating to us? So with that in mind, get your Bible guide out. And when you get your Bible guide out, turn to today's passage, the last three days, really the last four days of studying the book of Jeremiah. And when you do, let me tell you that the, the address on the bottom of the screen, you can write and get your Bible guide. We'd be happy to send it to you. Or you can call the number, that's faster. And uh, that'll get to us directly. Or you can go to www.biblediscoverytv.com. When you go to biblediscoverytv.com, just click on donation and make a donation there. We very much appreciate that this time of year. And uh, we will trust that God will speak to you and uh, we'll send you a Bible guide right away. Now, as we look at the fall of Judah, Jeremiah 20, 1 through 6, we need to pray. Father, I pray today in Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you would help us to see your word for what it is. 
Help us to understand what you've said in your word. Ignite the Holy Spirit inside of those who have called on your name to save their lives and help us to hear you. In the name of Jesus Christ, and we all said together, amen. As we look at this, study carefully what the Bible says. Jeremiah 20, verses 1 through 2, tell us a few things. First of all, now Pasher, the son of Imar, the priest who was also chief governor in the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Now Pashur struck Jeremiah the prophet, he hit him, and he put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin which is by the house of the Lord. Now that's unbelievable. He's near the house of God and there he's in the stocks. They gave him the wrong punishment. Pasher punishes Jeremiah for speaking God's truth. He speaks the truth of God, the word of God, and he's punished. What must be faithful to the Lord or we must be faithful to the Lord even when it hurts. You see, beloved, God reminds us that it's not the temple, it's not the things of God, it's not the church building, it's not all of this, but it's us and the Word of God. The Word of God, the Bible, the 66 books written by 40 authors over thousands of years, all with the same theme, tell us the truth about life, tell us the truth about God and what He's doing. And let me tell you something, right now in the time in which we live, we need to pay attention to a book that's older than 60 years or 70 years, we need to pay attention to God's word, which has lasted for thousands of years and throughout time has not changed. We know that for a fact because of the Dead Sea Scrolls and many other documents. So we need to pay attention to what God is saying. And, and Jeremiah was speaking this and, and here's what happened. Jeremiah chapter 20, verses three to five. It says, and it happened on the next day that Pasher, brought Jeremiah out of the stocks by the house of God. Can you believe that? Then Jeremiah said to him, Lord, has not all of your name or has not, the Lord has not called your name Pasher, but Megor Meshab. For thus says the Lord, behold, I will make you a terror to yourself and to all of your friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies. And your eyes shall see it. I will give all of Judah into the hand of the king of Babylon. Now that's what he says there. That's very important to remember because he's going to do that. And he shall carry them captive to Babylon and slay them with the sword. Jeremiah is speaking this. Moreover, I will deliver all the wealth of this city, that is Jerusalem, all of its produce and all of its precious things all of the treasures of the kings of Judah, all the treasures they've collected, I will give into the hand of their enemies who will plunder them, who will seize them and carry them to Babylon. Can you believe that? God changes pastor's name to mean this, fear on every side. That's what God's going to do. You see, beloved, the word of God declares a dire warning to Pasher and those who have listened to his lies. You can't listen to the lies of prophets who speak from their own hearts. But remember that the Bible comes as the Holy Spirit came into their hearts and speaks through them. We know that from Peter and we know that from several places in Scripture. So the Holy Spirit possesses them and they speak the word of God as Jeremiah was preaching and talking and speaking to the people about the word of God. And so that's what we believe, that the Bible is the word of God. So he does that anyway, even after coming out of the stocks by the house of the Lord, Jeremiah does that. He speaks the word of God, even though it is not popular. Now, we need to keep that in mind as we go to the next scripture because it says something fascinating. Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 6. Listen carefully. And you, Pasher, Jeremiah says, and all who dwell in your house shall go into captivity. Do you understand what he's saying here? All who dwell in your house shall go to captivity. They will become captive. He says, you shall go to Babylon and there you shall die and be buried there. 
Now, he's not done with just pastor, but listen, you and all of your friends to whom you have prophesied lies. That is amazing, you see, because in the end, God's word stands. You cannot go against God's word. He will give wealth, the wealth of Jerusalem, to its enemies, and Pasher will die in the land of exile. Do you understand what this meant? Do you realize that when the prophets who prophesied lies spoke and said, this is, you know, what the Lord says, that's what the Lord says, you know, do you realize that God proved them wrong? That Jeremiah, who they said he speaks lies, was actually speaking the truth. That's how far off the rebellion of Jerusalem had become. So far off they could not recognize the truth about what God was saying. And beloved, let me tell you that today we have to be careful because there are many false prophets in the land. And there are a lot of people speaking that really shouldn't be. You see, a prophet is somebody who speaks for the Lord. Let me tell you that we need to listen to the word of God. Fortunately, we have the word of God. We have the most important book of all. That book is the Bible, the 66 books written by the 40 authors over thousands of years, yet all with the same theme. And that theme is Jesus Christ. And we can check people's words. And if somebody says to you, I have a word of the Lord for you, well, that's good, but make sure that you check that word with the Bible, because the Bible is the one thing that triumphs everything. So we need to keep that in mind, beloved, as we think this through and as we begin to listen to the Lord. Don't just run off and get this prophecy and that prophecy, but read the Bible because God is speaking and today God is speaking. I believe the Bible is more relevant today than it ever has been. Now, don't take my word for it, but read it for yourself. What do you think? So with that, we come to this prayer. We say, Lord, I need to be careful when I talk. Help me to learn how to focus on your goodness and your greatness. Help me to turn my life and turn my words to tend truth and to help people live. Because that's what I want to do in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember that the Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs that the words of the righteous tendeth to life. That means we tend to assist the things to grow to life. That's very important. So we need to think this through and we need to understand what Jeremiah the weeping prophet is saying because God is speaking through that prophet. Well, you know, there's somebody back uh, here who's been gone for a few days. And uh, when you leave the air team for a few days, we notice. And so I did not do as good a job as could have been done by the man who was here. But Ryan, welcome back. Thank you very much. And I, if I may say so myself, he did a great job. Well, so thank you. I was I... watching from my <laughs> where I was. So and Exactly. And the question <laughs> is that uh, the question is, where were you? Well, um, we were giving, my wife was giving birth to our second son, uh, Elias Ryan Alexander. So that's, Yay! that's the big news, yeah. Yay! Elias Ryan Alexander Hembry. That's right, yep. And Elias means Yahweh is God. So that's it's a very Excellent. special, very special name to us. And uh, he's healthy and well, came a month early, which kind of shocked us, but uh, he's healthy and he's active, so. And he's so you know, cute. He's very I'm cute. I'm a proud so. aunt. Yeah, so <laughs> hopefully uh, when it comes Christmas time, we'll get them, get the boys on here. And, <laughs> mm -hmm. and oh, it'll be fun. So. It'll be great. Remember last Christmas when we had him on? Oh, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit it of a... It took a few takes. It, yeah. it was bedlam. It, it was. Yeah. But it was wonderful bedlam. But now you're grandpa again. And, I love it. And I'm Nana again. Another grandson. So, uh, you know, so now we, we, we wait for the blessed arrival of... of uh, the next grandbaby, but we are mm -hmm. so thrilled for you and Jasmine. And um, thank you. And I know our viewers missed you, but I'm sure that they've said that's okay. That yeah. was a great <laughs> reason for for missing. So, well, thank we you. Knew, we're excited, but we couldn't say anything. But 
it's mm -hmm. good that uh, everything went well and I'm very pleased with all that. And I love, I love your wife. She's like, mm -hmm. you know, let's get this thing done and let's get <laughs> yeah. it over with. And, and she's right on target, man. Eight, eight months. It should be nine months, but yeah. eight months. So yeah, he's a month he early. was ready. And he wasn't very small either, you know. So he was he was ready to come. So, you and know. Six, for all the women who yeah. are watching, <laughs> six pounds, 12 ounces, and 21 inches long. So I think that's a pretty good size boy for for being a month early and we love his name Elias that's, mm -hmm. that's wonderful so sweet. and Very for all sweet. the men watching he's a boy <laughs> he is that's and uh, it's interesting uh, just one more thing is that you know Ollie my first son yes. he's got dark hair and we weren't sure what to expect but Elias is blonde Yes. So that's kind of a surprise, which is great. So that's amazing. You know, we're just watching to see what his eyes, what his the color of his eyes are going to be. Yeah, you sometimes know? it keeps you guessing for a it, few months. It eh? does, yeah. <laughs> so, so the question is now we, we we have to ask the question: Where does the blonde come from? And I think it comes from your mom. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's probably and, safe. Well, yeah. I mean, and there's there's blonde. We have blonde on both sides. My wife, my wife has. Blonde and her family and I have it too. Exactly. So on the, wow. the left exactly. side. Filters so. down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's absolutely no blonde in my family. So no, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> very good. Uh, excellent. Very good. We're talking about Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a prophet from Anathoth. Anathoth was a city that was essentially cursed during the days of Solomon, for lots of reasons. And uh, but it's in the Bible. We can go back to that at some point. But Jeremiah was not somebody who was uh, popular or well-meaning. Well, I shouldn't say that. He's not somebody who was well thought of because he always told the truth. And whenever somebody tells the truth in a society which sees truth in their own way, your truth is your truth, my truth is my truth, and everybody's truth is everybody's truth, but then somebody comes on and, and actually tells the truth, then they are not thought of in a popular way. One of the things that Jeremiah did, of course, was at the beginning of his book, God speaks to him and says to him, my words are going to be put in your mouth. You're going to be designed to tear down nations and to raise up others, but I'm with you. Mm -hmm. This is interesting. Now, you guys have studied this for a long time. What is your impression of the weeping prophet, weeping because of Jerusalem, mm -hmm. Jeremiah, right? You know, I... I... I love this guy, and I'll admit I get very emotional when I read this, and I, I don't mean to. I just I start reading it, and I'm like, wow, they really mistreated him, you know, and he really went through a hard time, and yet he spoke the truth. And, you know, I, uh, I wear one of the passages from Jeremiah around my neck, and it's actually Jeremiah 1.5, and it's fitting for today's announcement because it says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Mm -hmm. And that's some, it's a verse that's really special to me and it's special to our family in particular. So mm -hmm. Jeremiah really means a lot to me. And, um, you know, uh, that's it. He, he spoke the truth and, and, and you know, praise God for, for him. It, well, I, I, I think so. I think that in, in many times in his ministry, he realized people were not praising God for him mm. because he was speaking the truth. And I think that's fascinating. And uh, we, we never knew what happened to him at the end. We really don't. Uh, he went to Egypt, but that's all we know. He presumably died there. We just don't know yeah. how. Exactly. But, so what do you think of him? Cool. Well, you know, it's interesting because God really sets Jeremiah up in a good time. He sets him up uh, during the reign of Josiah, the boy king Josiah. He takes this very, this young man, Jeremiah, who essentially is a boy in his own right and, and has him become a prophet. But that, you know, going back to Jeremiah chapter 1, that's in the 13th year of Josiah's reign. So that's right in the heyday of, of Josiah doing really great things for the Lord and, and trying to reform. So I, I think, you know, it's very um, strategic of God to raise up Jeremiah at that time and really establish him as a prophet in the eyes of the people, a true prophet. So uh, Jeremiah would have had all the signs that come along with being a true prophet of God. So his, he would have had to have had testable prophecies, immediate prophecies as well for people to see, yes, this is a man who carries the word of God. Uh, and then, of course, things begin to decline after Josiah's death, which had also been prophesied uh, and, and spoken to 
to Jeremiah. So God wasn't surprised by any of this decline. No, God God had set this up. Jeremiah was a voice to 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 you know that last voice to offer repentance and and that last voice to offer a way out right up until the very end. Um, even even when destruction is decreed for Jerusalem and 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 Babylon is going to be coming in, Jeremiah is saying to the people, "Okay, you just need to go with this judgment now. Just go with it." And you'll live. It, it will be better for you. So there's this there's this lifeline for all people who are willing to listen to Jeremiah. And we know that there would have been some who did listen to Jeremiah. Um, you know, he 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 has enough respect to have a scribe who who um, is an official scribe. He would he was trained. He probably would have been a no, noble birth. You know, so. It's, it's interesting how God sets this whole thing up to offer that lifeline to his people and to speak truth in a time when it wasn't popular to hear the truth. One of the things that's interesting, you talk about Barak, and uh, he is an interesting scribe, because if you want to be a scribe, you don't want to be somebody who works with Jeremiah, <laughs> because he's telling the truth, and the truth is not popular, and all of that stuff, and God writes to him. A very short chapter mm -hmm. uh, and it's the only chapter in a book like this where God speaks to him and says now listen you know you have we, we haven't gone there yet but you have your life and be glad you have your life but I'm not going to reward you I, I'm just going to say that I'm going to give you your life as a reward and uh, God speaks to Barak in a very interesting way and we've mm -hmm. had some discoveries uh, there are people who have think they've discovered the fingerprint of Barack. <laughs> well, no, they definitely they definitely have discovered a fingerprint on on a on a seal impression. So, uh, um, a little impression of clay called a bulla, uh, where you would write a doc a document would be written, uh, and then a piece of string would be wrapped around the do the document, whether it was leather or papyrus, and a little dollop of clay would be uh, held onto the string, and they would use a signet seal uh, to squish it down, and that was the signature of the sender or the owner of that that parchment or that scroll. And one of those, which we've talked about on the program before, and we will in the future when we get to it, uh, talk about this. Uh, there is a signet seal impression from Baruch the scribe's seal, uh, and there's a partial thumb <laughs> fingerprint on it. I mean, it doesn't do us any good because we don't have, you know, Baruch's <laughs> fingerprints. But, but it's interesting. It's, it's cool. It's, it's somebody's thumbprint. It's, it's very neat to see that personal, you know, Touch. it's it's a remnant mm -hmm. of who he was. Mm -hmm. I think that so. it's interesting because at the time we've learned, Ryan and I learned this, we were at a, a conference where a, a woman was talking about this, a Jewish woman, and how that the fire in, in mm -hmm. Jerusalem uh, burned and forged some of these clay signets and, and all of that. Definitely, it's a very common thing because uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't fire clay that's being sealed. There's a lot of things that aren't fi made of uh, unfired clay. So the destruction layer, not only does it preserve uh, archaeological sites because everything crumbles in and kind of crushes everything down, and then when the next generation comes along, they just build on top of it. So it acts as a preservation layer, but that fire really does, it really can preserve key things. Now, it obviously destroys more than it preserves. It destroyed all of the written records that, that they have or that would have been there, but as testified to by the hundreds and hundreds of uh, seal impressions that have been found, uh, you mm -hmm. know, fired by clay. There were quite a few documents being kept in ancient Jerusalem. So. <laughs> Jeremiah is an interesting guy. And what do you think of Jeremiah, Jan? Well, something that Corey said, well, both, both Ryan and Corey said great things, but you were talking about God um, having that lifeline mm -hmm. there. Uh, and Jeremiah was that lifeline, and yet even if you if you fast forward to today's time, throughout the generations, God has always provided a lifeline. And of course, his lifeline, since he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to the earth, Jesus is our lifeline to God. And um, it's so important for us to know the truth, because the truth is that that has never changed. And that truth that Jeremiah spoke that was rejected by most in his time because they didn't want to hear 
about what they were doing wrong. They didn't want to hear that there could be destruction. They didn't want to hear that. That kind of rains on the parade, right? Well, same today. We don't like to hear bad news. We don't like to, to understand that maybe some of the choices that we're making are not the right ones. Nobody really likes to hear that. But it's the same today. And that's why it's so important. And, and for us to have the, the television program that you're watching right now, where we're not going to get everything 100% right all of the time. But we delve into the Bible from the beginning to the end, and we read it, and we ask God to help us to understand what he's saying so that we can understand that truth and throw that lifeline out there so that we can understand what God's truth is. Um, because it doesn't change. God stays the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there's a lot of new concepts out there. Mm, they're really not new, but they just sort of keep coming around and coming around and coming around. But God's word stays the same. And we need to have that, not just in our heads, but in our hearts too. And that's what's different. We can have a relationship with God and that's really very special. It is, and the new concepts that you're talking about are new ways to understand the Bible. And actually, remember the Holy Spirit is with the Christians and with people who believe in God and have asked Jesus to come into their heart. The Holy Spirit is the most important teacher of all. He is the one who will teach you. So when you seek God, seek His face, go to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, teach me and show me your ways and your will. And you know what? The Holy Spirit will do that.